for Prima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst, Professor Raymond Sotna, here to unpack his column titled, Making Sense of the ANC Local Government Defeats. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you very much. The ANC suffered serious losses in the November elections. It is unclear whether you think that this was a good or bad thing. And why do you say that the election results reinforce a sense of cynicism about South African politics? You know, I think the ANC got what they deserved in the sense that if you are obliged by the constitution to provide basic needs to people, water, electricity, Uh, roads and all these things, and people have sewerage running through their streets right next to their homes. They don't have usable toilets, and going to the toilets are dangerous. Well, then you must pay for it in the elections, and they paid for it. Uh, However, it's not really a stable situation in that the other organizations are also minorities except for the Western Cape. So it's a situation of uncertainty where we've got to really develop other alternatives, uh, which I've argued in my other article in relation to going beyond elections, having elections, but also having a powerful uh, citizenry or population that uh, put pressure on the uh, authorities to uh, ensure that these needs are met. And why do you criticize former President Tabombeki's notion of the ANC having a historic mission? And what is wrong with his criticism of the quality of ANC membership? You know, this idea of a historic mission is that inevitably, the ANC will do this and that, or inevitably uh, there will be freedom and national democratic revolution. Now, nothing's inevitable in this world. I used to also believe in inevitability of socialism and things like that. I think that you have to work for mission, for if there's a historic mission, you have to work to achieve it. It's part of what is called teleology, that there's an inevitable unfolding of history towards a destination that is predetermined. Now, I don't think that's a valid way of analyzing. Um, His criticism of the quality of membership, I find problematic in the sense that when the ANC was unbanned, it became a mass organization. Again, it had been one in the 1950s, but the conditions were very different. Now, when you have a mass organization, it is true that you have to ensure that the quality of membership accords with the values and objectives of the organization. That is why in 1990, we used to have induction programs. And you can't blame the membership quality if you don't have induction programs. I don't think that the the ANC any longer inducts members into its values and things like that. And the problem is that when you have a leadership who are susceptible to criminality, it's a problem because uh, what are they going to induct the members into? And you have a lot of claims that members are bought and things like that. And even at the 1917 conference, he, he paid for the transport of a whole lot of people to the conference. And they were monitored uh, to ensure that they didn't sort of go and uh, leave and join another camp. So that even in the less corrupt section of the ANC, there are practices that are problematic in terms of the way in which members and delegates are chosen. So that I think uh, it is important to have a membership of any organization that is qualitatively suited for their purposes, but you can't blame the membership if they're not inducted into those values. 
And why do you reject Mbeki's characterization of the election results as a right-wing victory? Well, you know, um, they didn't vote against the ANC because uh, they were fascists, the people who voted. They voted against the ANC because of the failure of the ANC to carry out what they'd undertaken. They had promised various things. And in the last few months before the elections, you had Cyril Ramaphosa go to uh, Nomzamo, uh, part of Soweto, and quickly fix up electricity. Now, that's not the way to deal with the electorate. And I think uh, they paid the price not because the ANC is a left-wing organization. What is the ANC's um, ethos nowadays? I mean, people want tenders, they want money, they want things like that. There's, it's not clear what people stand for. Uh, Lindiva Sisulu this week uh, attacked the constitution and for failure to... to uh, 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 deal with the poverty of black people in South Africa. Now, what has she been doing for 20 some years? What are uh, the political, what is the political orientation of the ANC? There's no debate. There's just uh, alignment with this person or that person. Maybe this one will become president. Maybe we'll endorse that one. Someone will be in this camp or that camp. You know, that's not politics. That's just maneuvering for positions. And lastly, Raymond, you say that there is no stable alternative to the ANC. If that is true, how does such an alternative emerge? Well, in that other article that I've written, but I also hinted at it at earlier ones, I've been arguing that you have to build a new alliance of forces outside of parliament and not to replace parliament, not to say that the vote is irrelevant. The vote is very important gain historically. But because the people who've been voted in have not been carrying out the mandate and promises made to the people and making a better life for all, it's important to have organizations built outside there. Now, this will take time. and But I've tried to advance some ideas about the components of such an alliance. That was yeah. Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's polity about making sense of the ANC local government defeats.